Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are getting back to the basics. Welcome to Diamond Painting 101, The Basics. I'm talking about this is going to be more basic than having a Starbucks latte that is pumpkin spice while wearing Ugg boots, okay? This is going to be completely basic from scratch, how to diamond paint. Now, I have noticed the influx of new folks coming onto the channel. So, hello, welcome. I'm Miss Coffee. And today, I am going to show you exactly the ins and outs of how to diamond paint. So, first things first, you need to have a diamond painting kit. So, I'm just going to randomly pick one. Boom. Now, this kit comes to you from Diamond Art Club. Do you have to go buy this kit? No. Uh, this is just one of my favorite companies to purchase from. The kit just happened to be out because I just unboxed it over the weekend. So I'm going to use this kit to show you how to diamond paint. So this is just how the kits come. They'll usually either come in a box or a bubble boot, or they come in many different ways. They show you like what's in the box, all that fun stuff. So then when you open your box or your package, now I've already unboxed this. So the stuff is going to be kind of like all over the place. Um, and I will show you how to, to kit up in a different video. Um, but yeah, so, cause I don't think I have any storage containers that are available right now, but this is how your stuff is going to come. So you'll get a bag with your drills in it. You'll get a tool kit, which will have everything you need to diamond paint. And this is a square kit. So on their kits, it says square tool kit contents. And it tells you everything that's in this little bag. And you don't need anything else besides what's in this bag. So when you're first starting out, that's all you need. Um, you can even use the little baggies for storing your drills in until, like, if you're just trying this out and you don't want to go spend and invest your money in uh, purchasing, like, storage containers and all that, you do not have to. You can use these little baggies. Now, I will warn you, some companies like Star Ore or Evermoment, which is on AliExpress, they give you the exact amount of baggies that you have for the colors that you have. Uh, not all companies do that. Diamond Art Club does not do that. You essentially get like maybe five or six baggies in case you have some extras you want to save. Usually you will have extras of every color. Sometimes you'll run out. That's neither here nor there. Uh, also in the toolkit, you'll get a pair of tweezers for mistakes. So if you have to pull a mistake off your canvas, you'll get these nifty little pointy seat tweezers. Do keep in mind that they are super sharp. They can and will pierce and cut very easily. So please keep the shield on the tweezers when you're not using them, especially if you have small children around in your house. You also get this blue squishy, which is a comfort grip that goes on your diamond painting pen. Sometimes a little harder than normal to get on the pen. So then you just push it down on the pen. Boom, there you go. A lot of the times Diamond Art Club will also give you this. And you're probably wondering, what is that? Bring you down to the business. This is called a multi-placer. It goes on this end of your pen. So you have a single placer on this side. This is going to be your multi-placer. Multi-placer meaning it will allow you to lay down more than one drill at a time. Where this is only one, this will allow you to put down at least three drills at a time. And then you probably got something that looks like this. It might not have been in that shape. It might have been in this shape. Not with the holes in it, but just that shape. This is called wax, or some people call it putty, or people call it mud. Um, this is what you use to stick the diamonds to your canvas. And I'm going to show you here. So, again, you have everything you need here. And I'm literally, I, I'm not going to do the entire canvas with you because... How long it takes to do a canvas is completely on you. It depends on how much time and energy you spend on working on the canvas. Some canvases can take a very long time. Some canvases can take a short period of time. Um, so first things first, I'm going to unroll my canvas. And this is what is considered poured glue. A poured glue method, you will notice a poured glue or a mounted glue. Because I know places like Treasure Studios Arts uses a mounted glue. Um, they have a clear cover so you can see the picture that you'll be diamond painting. Um, with that, you will, uh, you'll be able to see the picture and that can tell you that it's poured glue. If you get a kit that's poured glue, if the kit does like this one is, you see how it's rolling up? 
all you have to do is roll it the opposite way. Now, the glue is very durable. You're not going to mess it up. So you just roll it the other way. It's very rare for the canvases like this to have issues. I'm not saying it's impossible because it very well is, but it's very rare for these canvases to have issues. So you roll it the opposite way, and I just go back and forth with my hands here on the top, and then I let it unravel itself here. And there you have it. See how it lays nice and flat? All right. And this image is called Sunflower, and I will, of course, have it linked down below. So... How do you diamond paint? Now, on the sides of your kit, it might be on just one side. It might be on both sides. You're going to have something that looks like this. It's called a legend. The legend is going to tell you what code goes where. So on this legend here, it gives you a schematic. This is a 42 by 42 centimeter. It is called sunflower. Now, you don't need to worry about this stuff unless you're framing it. Uh, the, the title of it doesn't mean anything. But the DAC number up here, that's for them. If you ever have a problem with your kit and you need to contact customer service, they're going to ask you for a model number. That is your model number right there. AB stands for Aurora Borealis. And this little S tells you that the, the kit is square. So first thing, your drills. They're going to come packaged like this. And this is just from, oh, sorry. That's, this is just from this company. All companies package their things differently. And I'm going to show you the difference between a square drill and a round drill. It's going to be essentially one is square, one is round. So these are the squares and these are the rounds. These rounds come from a different kit that I'm working on. So Aurora Borealis, you're probably wondering what that is. Okay, if you look at these drills, do you notice that they're super sparkly on top? They almost look like a rainbow effect. But if you look on the drills next to them, they don't have that same effect on them. They're still sparkly, but they don't have the same effect as this one does over here. There's a coating, an iridescent coating put onto these drills. And it's called Aurora Borealis, or we call them ABs in the diamond painting world. AB drills are a drill that has an iridescent coating on them that make them sparkle just a little bit brighter than your normal diamonds. So that they also reflect the colors from the diamonds around them to make it a little extra sparkly. So as you can see, they're twinkling here in the sunlight. And that just makes them a little extra sparkly. And I can show you an example of that because I actually have one sitting next to me here. This is from a kit that I recently finished called Melinda and Muhu. She's a biggin. And if you look right here, that looks like just white, right? But if you look up close, you see how that sparkles? Now look at the white. The white up there are AB drills. Oh, hold on. There we go. The whites right there are AB drills. And those AB drills give accent to the other drills around it and on the canvas so that when you frame it, and I haven't had this one framed yet, when you frame it, they it, it'll... Uh, make the which it doesn't have to be framed for it to sparkle brighter but it makes the drills around it sparkle just a little bit brighter see how they sparkle brighter than the, the drills over here might be hard to see because of the way the lighting is it's dreary outside uh so how do you diamond paint and you're gonna see this and be like what in the world did i get myself into those drills are tiny tiny what am I doing? Oh my God, relax. This is actually a lot of fun. So again, these are your, what we call drills or diamonds or studs or whatever they want to call them in the diamond painting world. I call them drills. Um, but these are going to be your drills. And on each pack of your drills, a lot of companies will put what is called a DMC number. So if you've ever done cross stitching, you know what a DMC number is. It's just a code for a particular color. And yes, these codes match the DMC colors for cross stitch, as far as I know. Now, with the AB drills, it's a little bit different because the AB drills are going to be any number under 150. So for the AB drills that I just showed you, they're 132. That doesn't tell you that there's 132 drills in the bag. That tells you the DMC code number. And for that number, if you look on your legend, 
132, it'll have your the number, the code, and the DMC. So what number it is on the canvas here, the code, which is number one, and 126. So I know all the little baggies of 126 go on the number one. All the baggies of 132, all the drills in that bag go on the symbol for number two. And that's how you that's how you do this. So for this baggie here, it says 900. Now you're not gonna worry about this number here. This is a number, this is something that they used to do on their older kits. Uh, this number would represent how many drills are in the bag. Not all of your, your drills will come like this. So if you see this number five, that tells you there's 500 drills in that bag. Um, and it, it goes on from there. So it's like one is 100, two is 200, three is 300, four is 400, five is 500, seven is 1,000, and I think eight is 2,000. Something like that, either way. So this is bag 900, and you wouldn't worry about that little number, just the 900, because it's the bigger number. So on the kit here, if you look, 900 is the pound sign or the hashtag. So anything that you see on this canvas that has that symbol will get those drills. So let's look for some of those real quick. So for the hashtag, when you're looking at it right here, that's where this bag of, that's where these diamonds would go. You would put those diamonds on that symbol. Okay? So, after you get your stuff kitted up, and again, I'm not going to kit it up. I'm going to do a whole other video on kitting up. Um, so, when kitting up, you can use a container like this. These are called Harbor Freight. So don't worry about this. It's just a sticker that got stuck on there. These are called Harbor Freight Containers. They are always linked down in my description box, but I will make sure to move them up for this video. They, it's a 20, it says it's a 25 piece set. Now, when it says 25 pieces, that means there's 24 of these little containers in here. And then the box that holds them is piece number 25. This is about $4.92 or 94 cents on the Harbor Freight uh, website. Um, this is probably one of the more popular, uh, storage systems besides like the, the lockables, which the lockables you can get, I want to say for about 20 bucks on Amazon. And this here is the lockables. It's Craftmate lockables. And I will also link these down below. Just do keep in mind that if you use my, any of my affiliate links for Amazon, I am an influencer. So I will get a commission off of anything you purchase using my links. So it is greatly appreciated. But these are the lockables here. And they look like this. And again, there's another project in there. But essentially they have this release button right now. You can shake these. You can drop them. They're not opening, right? If you press this little button right here on the side, that's how you release them. Now the other ones stay locked but that one is open. So the other ones are still locked, so I can pour some out, put some in, and they're still in there. This is another popular storage system because it's kind of like a book and you can put your schematic here on the side. So there's two options for storages for your diamonds, and that's, how, that's essentially how you would kit them up. You would take, and you can either use tape or labels. Uh, you can take and put, you'll put the DMC number on there, and then you'll put the drill that corresponds to that DMC number. And what I like to do is I'll actually put the DMC number and I will put the symbol. Because I'm, when I'm diamond painting, I'm looking for the symbol, not necessarily the DMC number. So with Diamond Art Clubs, and again, not all companies do this. Places like Diamond Art Club and Star Or are two of the only places that I know that give you an actual sticker. This is their schematic sticker and you can essentially cut this off and put it on your Harbor Freight containers to label them so you don't have to actually go one by one to label them. You can use this sticker and you can also put this picture on your container which is what I did here which is why you see all that gunk on there. Um, I didn't clear off the last project enough so it just yeah anyways. So you can cut out this picture so you know what kit is in this container. And then, of course, you can cut the 27 uh, symbols off and put them on the container however you want. But for right now, 
we're going to get to how do you diamond paint? Like, what is this? What do I do with this? What, what all of this? Like, what? Oh my God, it's so much. What do you do? What are all these little diamonds? Now, the first thing people do when they get a diamond painting is they freak out. One, because the diamonds are very small. Uh, normal diamonds are, I want to say it's 2.8 for rounds and 2.5 for squares. If that's wrong, you'll see a little edit come up. Um, so they are teeny tiny, but don't focus on the size of the drills. They give you two heart-shaped plates of wax, which you won't need both of them. You won't even use one, all of one of them. It'll take you a while to get through the wax. And I'm not going into any of the special tools or anything like that. This is basic. Like, I'm going to use this blue drill pen with its squishy and this heart-shaped wax and the drills. And I'm going to show you exactly how this is done. So, most people like to section off their diamond painting. They will take washi tape or masking tape and they will just cut this canvas in, like a hashtag so they'll do for this canvas it'll be cut down the, the sides like this and then same way across with washi tape and then they will just cut it as they go to open up a small section so all i'm going to do make sure you can see what i'm doing is open up that small section because all of that and that is what we call color blocking Color blocking is when you have a space with all the same symbol, a big wide open space, just like that. That is called color blocking. Now for confetti, let's see if there are any confetti. I don't think there's any confetti in here. Confetti would be something like this. Let me close that before I get myself stuck to it. Confetti would be something like this or here where there's a bunch of different symbols in an area that would be considered confetti. Uh, there's nothing wrong with confetti. Some people prefer confetti. Some people uh, like color blocking. Just know that in most images, the more confetti there is, the more detail it is. So you, you always want to try to get, if you want the best quality of your image, you want the picture to be a little bit bigger, not so much smaller. Some companies can do smaller images and they still look really good. Some companies cannot. So just be weary of that. So when you're thinking about, if you're thinking about getting a custom image, like a picture that you've taken yourself to send to a company, you want to make sure you get as much detail as possible, which means you're going to want to go for the biggest size that they're going to offer you. Uh, one of the places that I would highly recommend for customs would be Evermoment. Uh, my second would be Diamond Art Club. Now do keep in mind, the only reason why Diamond Art Club is second, even though they're my favorite company to order from, they do not and will not edit your images, whereas Evermoment will show you a complete edit of your image. The only problem is Evermoments only come in squares, where Diamond Art Club customs only come in rounds. But uh, Evermoment, they will contact you and uh, work out the details. They will show you a workup of what your image will look like with the diamonds on it. Uh, it's kind of They call it a, uh, a mock-up. And it'll show you what your image is supposed to look like at the different sizes. And they'll ask you what size you want. And then you tell them what size. And then they'll make it. It usually takes about, mm, I want to say, five to seven days. And then they'll ship it out to you. Diamond Art Club, they have little things on their website that you can edit. Like the, the brightness or the darkness. You can choose your size. Uh, but they don't actually contact you and go through the steps and motions to tell you what size would be best. So if you're someone who's unsure, I would highly recommend Evermoment. Um, if you already know what size you want and Diamond Art Club has it and you like doing rounds, I would highly recommend Diamond Art Club. Both companies do great customs. Both companies are worth taking a look at. Um, now, both companies are a little bit more expensive, but this, this is definitely one of those crafts that you get what you pay for. If you're paying $5 for a canvas, you're paying $5 for a canvas. Remember that. You're not going to get anything that glimmers like gold, okay? So, and sometimes they're not even bad canvases. Just remember you get what you pay for. So, we have our drill pen. We have our wax. Let's find the diamonds that correspond to this. So, if we look on our legend, which we're going to bring you down. So, this is a little dot inside of pink, which matches this one here. So, Bag number 963. So we're going to look for bag number 963.
which is going to be this bag here. So 963, look down here, 963. So this color goes on these symbols. So then what you want to do, and like I said, I'm not using anything that didn't come in this kit so that you guys can see if I can find the tray that came with it. And of course, there are other uh, tools and stuff that you can use, but I'm showing you based on what you got in your kit. All right, so the little clear boat, the drills, the wax, and the pen. That's all you need to complete this painting. Obviously, you need the other colors of the drills, but again. Um, and what you would do is you would pick a side. Now, the side I like to choose is the side that I, what hand I use. So if I'm left-handed, I will use, I will start on the left side. If I'm right-handed, I will start on the right side. That's just because when you start to diamond paint on this side of the canvas, say you're working this way, uh, you can work in any direction you want. It's your kit. Remember that if you want to make edits to your kit or you don't like the way something looks, you are more than welcome to go and fix it and do your kit however you want to. Uh, it's your kit. You've bought, you've bought it. So you can do essentially whatever you want. If you want to cut it up into little pieces and work on it that way with, I've seen a creator do that before. So I, I, I would say work from the hand, like I'm right handed. So I'm going to start from this side. That way, when I go to put my hand down to work on the middle section here, I'm not getting stuck to it. If something were to happen where your kit would become less tacky in an area. So right now, if you pull this back, it's tacky, meaning it's sticky. If something happens where it comes less sticky or you drop something on it, one, I'm going to have another tutorial on that earlier, later on this week. But if something happens where it's something, you know, you get your arm on it or your sweatshirt and it's not sticky anymore, take a baby wipe, a wet wipe or a wet, very wet napkin so that you're not getting the napkin fibers. Rub on that part that's not tacky anymore. Let it air dry or use a blow dryer on low or medium heat and dry the area. It will become tacky again. So don't freak out if something happens and it's not tacky. I will let you know this. Do not take the film completely off your kit. That goes for any kit you get. You only want to pull back a small section because this plastic or the opaque paper will protect it from getting dirt and debris on it. And if your house is anything like mine, I have two heavily shedded dogs that sh because they shed so bad, their hair is always everywhere. So to keep it safe, do not pull the plastic completely off. Work on it in sections, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna peel this back. We're gonna peel it out to about right there, okay? Got your tray. Now keep, Bear with me, because it's been a while since I've used a little tray like that. The tray I usually use is this size, okay? So it's going to take me a few minutes. So we're just going to, and again, I'm not kidding this up or anything. I'm just working out of this bag. We're just going to pour a few drills into the tray. And so what I do when I get it is I tap it around. If you shake it and tap it with your hand, tilt it while you're tapping it, it will have the drills face right side up because you want the drills when you put them on the canvas this top part is what is going to be on the canvas this bottom part is what's on the cam or sticks to the canvas the top part is what's facing up so then what you're going to do we're going to bring you down you're going to take this wax first things first take the plastic off the wax because there always will be a piece of plastic on it to protect it from getting stuff stuck to it okay you take your pen and stab it wiggle it around boom when you do that if you can see in the pen oh let's do it like this there you go when you look in the pen you see the wax has got into the pen that's what you want you can also do it with your multi-placer side. You do the same thing. You put your multi-placer in, you stab it, you wiggle it around. Wiggling around, make sure it gets securely in there. And boom, you have wax in your multi-placer. That is how you fill your pen, okay? I'm going to lift you up a little bit. Now, how do you diamond paint? You literally take one drill and you just tap it. When you tap it, because of the wax in there, the wax grabs a hold of, okay, you got to focus. There you go. 
the wax gr grabs a hold of that diamond because the diamond stands up. And I believe Diamond Art Club used 26 facets, which means the little cuts on top of the diamond. Um, so that's what the wax is holding on to. Will it keep it? No. It stays securely on your pen until you're ready to place it. Then what you do, and as you can see on this canvas, push you up a little bit, there's like these little squares on here. You just take the drill, place it right on top of the symbol. If you don't place it on there straight, it's okay. It will straighten itself out, especially with squares. Because I know a lot of people that start off don't like to start off with squares. My very first kit was a square. Squares are a little bit more intimidating because you're more prone to wanting to straighten them. Because they're not going to be 100% perfect. If that problem arises, do what we like to call the checkerboard which is essentially this here. You would go and place a drill on every other symbol until it makes a checkerboard. Doing this makes your drills straighter than any other thing I've ever found in diamond painting. So if you do the checkerboard method, and you won't always be able to do the checkerboard method because a lot of the times the color will change and it won't be the same, but for big areas like this, Doing the checkerboard does help out tremendously. We're just going to put that there. Also, you can slide your drills around. If you put your drill on the wrong symbol, you can slide it around. Or you can pick it up with your tweezers, pick it off the canvas, and move it to whatever symbol that you were supposed to put it on. So we're just going to do like a mini checkerboard here. We're gonna do one more row of checkerboard. And this helps a lot of people get through uh, large areas of the same color. They will do the checkerboard, especially when they have uh, squares because they want the squares to be perfect. Now, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to my squares. If they're a little crooked, I'm fine with it. As long as they stay on the canvas, I don't make too much of a fuss about it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put those on here like this. And again, it makes your drills straighter than anything else you can do essentially for your drills. And then what you would do is then go back in. See, that one's not sitting directly on top of it. There we go. And you will hear a snap. You hear it? The drills, especially the squares, will snap into place. little diamond painting as ASMR for you. Sometimes if you don't place your drills down exactly how they're supposed to be on the canvas, you will get gapping between your drills. Um, you can always push your drills around or use a drill straightener to straighten them to see if that will alleviate the gapping. Um, sometimes the drills are just a little bit too big or too small for the canvas and it, that'll create gapping um that happens sometimes on some kits i know a couple of companies have had troubles with it but you can't really see the gapping from far away so again that's something else that you know where i know it's it's happened on a few of my kits i i don't like raise a big fuss about it unless it's like horrifically bad i won't raise a fuss so just making sure that wasn't a trash drill. Every once in a while, you'll get a trash drill. I'm trying to find one, but Diamond Art Club pretty has, has pretty good quality of drills right now. Up oh, here's one. Okay, here we go. So a trash drill. If you get a drill that has a hole in it, or like this one here, you see how it has extra plastic on the side? We call those knobbly bits. What happens is when they're making the drill in the mold, it doesn't get cut off all the way like it's supposed to. Like, it's supposed to look like this, how it's perfectly square, not with the extra pieces. This is what's considered a trash drill. Now, with knobbly bits, you have two options. You can either throw it out, or you can take a pair of nail clippers and clip off those pl plastic pieces, and they will clip off. Um, 
but a lot of the times that happens because the mold isn't cut correctly and you will get a couple of drills like that no biggie like i said you can either take nail clippers to them oh gotta bring you up a little bit you can either take nail clippers to them to clip off the extra pieces or you can uh just throw them away most companies will make sure you have plenty of drills that if you do have trash you'll still have enough to complete it so don't worry if you have trash in your drills All right, so there we have it. And just like that, boom. See how straight they are? No issues or anything. And I, I love squares just because of the way they feel when they're done. It's amazing. So that's it. That's how you diamond paint, literally. That's all it is. You stab the pink wax that you get, which again, might not come in a heart shape, might come in a square shape. Most of them come in square or rectangle shapes, but special companies will give you special shapes. You stab your pen. And matter of fact, before I let you go, let me show you how to, and I will have a completely different video on this, but just for this sake here, we're going to do multi-placer. So again, we're going to bring you down into the business. For the multi-placer, they come in many different sizes. Multi-placers come anywhere between 2 to 15. So this is a size 2. Let me see if I can find my other one. Um, did I leave? Yep, here it is. So these are the differences in sizes. So the blue pen has the multi-placer of a three. This mermaid color pen here is a 15-placer. And it'll, that one will tell you it's a 15-placer. But we're not going to use that. We're going to use the one that came with our kit, which is the three-placer, which this one will not tell you what placer it is. But this is a three-placer, and you'll know because you'll only be able to pick up three drills. So then what you want to do is you want to shake your tray around until you get some drills lined up, okay? You then take your pen, and you put it right on top of those three drills, just like that. See how it picked it up? Just like your, it, you place them just like you would with the regular pen. And you just place them down on the canvas. So you pick up the three. Place them down. And they don't always go on straight when you use a multi-placer, which is why some people will not use multi-placers. Like, there are a couple of diamond painters that just don't like multi-placing. And that's fine. Everybody has their own preference. It's your world, boo-boo, do your thing. So, that just helps you put down more than one drill at a time. Like, I, I love my multi-placers. I have one of every size, uh... I even have backups for those because I'm known to break my multi-placers. We're not going to talk about it. Um, but you can even, like you can see here, I, I checkerboarded the three-placer. And that's it. That's how easy it is to diamond paint. So if you've been curious about diamond painting and wanted to know the basics of diamond painting, there you have it. That's all diamond painting is. Um... You're literally just placing these little diamonds on this canvas. And again, how long does, will it take you to complete it is up to you. Uh, don't worry about how long it takes other people to complete things because you work at a different pace than everybody else. So you may not work at the same pace as someone who's been doing this, say, for a year. You're new to diamond painting. Get adjusted with diamond painting before you go out and, you know, spend hellacious amounts of money on tools and everything else. Um, if you have problems seeing your symbols, cause some canvases will come where the symbol quality isn't the best or the symbols are just really small and you don't have the best eyesight. You can either take your phone and zoom in like this to see the drills. Cause you see how you can see the drill filled here clearly. You can see that these like look like little top hats and then like triangles and circles. Some canvases aren't this clear. What you can do is either use your phone or they have something like a light pad, which is a pad that you would put underneath your work that will illuminate your canvas from underneath so that you can see the drills better. Um, but for right now, I just wanted to show you the basics, the 101 of diamond painting, and there you have it. So you would just 
you just using what I have in this kit, I am able to complete this. As you can see, we already started here. We made good leeway. Next video, when you come back, I will show you how to use the different sizes of multi-placers. But if you have any more questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me in the comment section below. I also have my business Facebook page listed there where you can message me there as well. So again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free, open up, ask any question you would like. That's what we're here for, folks. With that said, though, I now must bid you adieu. If this tutorial was at all helpful for you, all I ask is that you please give it a thumbs up to let me know that this was something helpful for you. Um, again, if you're not already a subscriber and would like to subscribe, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. With that said, I'm going to now bid you adieu, but not before reminding you, like I always try to. Be kind. Be courteous.